In this video, we're going to cover Atari 5200 emulation on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Of course, as soon as I update my Atari 5200 guide, a new Atari 5200 Focus Core is released, thus requiring me to update it yet again. This new Atari 5200 Core fixes analog input, making most Atari 5200 games fully playable, and it is quite awesome. This guide is assuming you have followed one of my new How to Install RetroArch guides. If not, refer to the Xbox RetroArch playlist in the description below, get it set up, and then come back and follow along with this guide. Alright, let's dive in. So the first step to getting Atari 5200 emulation up and running on our Xbox consoles is to source an Atari 5200 BIOS file and name it 5200.rom. This step is technically optional with the new Atari 5200 core, but it is still recommended to get the best compatibility. I have a video on my channel showing you how to get a 5200 BIOS file as well as a selection of games from the Atari Vault program on Steam, so if you're interested in following along with that process, a link will be in the description below. But once you have your 5200 BIOS file sourced and named accordingly, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So if you have moved your system folder to USB, Plug your USB drive into your computing device, open up the system folder, and drag it right on in. I already had one there, so I'm just going to tell it to replace it. Now, if you are still using the Q drive to store your system folder, just open up Durango FTP and start your FTP file share. And then back on your computing device of choice, open up your Xbox's FTP file share using your preferred method, open the local folder, RetroArch folder, local state folder, system folder, and then drag your 5200 BIOS file inside. Again, I already had one there, so I'm just going to tell it to replace it. And with that in place, we're ready to move on to games. So Atari 5200 games can come in A52 format or BIN format. If you get them from the Atari Vault program, they're going to be in BIN format, as you see here. These games are small. You don't really need to compress them, but if you really wanted to, you could put them in zip format. But once you have your games sourced, we just need to add them to our preferred storage medium. So I'm going to be using USB. So I'm just going to open up my games folder and drag the Atari 5200 games right on in. Done. If you're using the S drive, go back into the root of your Xbox file share, S drive, program files, Windows apps, RetroArch folder, games folder, and drag them in. But with that BIOS file and games in place, we're ready to move over to the Xbox. So over on the Xbox, I got my USB drive back in place and I'm ready to begin loading up Atari 5200 content. But seeing as I have already made an Atari 5200 playlist from the previous guide, I want to show you how to convert a previously made Atari 5200 playlist over to the new core if you have happened to done so. So head down to settings, playlists, manage playlists, open your Atari 5200 playlist and change your default core over to Atari 5200A5200. And now, when you try to load up your Atari 5200 content, it will be defaulted to the new Atari Core. So you can go in, you can play a game. And if you go under your RetroArch Quick Menu, you can see that we are in the A5200 Core. So, nice and convenient. Now let's say you didn't already have a playlist in place. So, give me one second here. Oh look, I don't have an Atari 5200 playlist anymore. Anyway, to get started loading up Atari 5200 games, head down to Import Content, and we're going to do a scan directory as long as your games are not zipped. So if you have your Atari 5200 games just in bin format, A52, A52 format, you could do a scan directory, and then navigate to where your games are stored. So if you have them in USB under Dev Mode, it'll be an E. USB under retail mode and BND, or you can follow that S drive path if you put them on the internal SSD. So for my example, E, games, Atari 5200 games, scan this directory, and then I will just let it do its thing. And then when it's done, you'll have your Atari 5200 playlist here on the left. Now, one of the nice things about doing the scan directory method, if you go up to the main menu, online updater, playlist thumbnails updater, you can download box arts for your Atari 5200 games by selecting the Atari 5200 playlist. And then when you go into the playlist option, you'll see box arts for all your games. But now you can just go ahead and load up a game and tell it to run. And you might have to select a core again if you haven't already. And we're going to choose the Atari 5200 A5200 core and then tell it to run. 
And right off the bat, it will give us the Atari 5200 boot screen, and we can begin playing our game by pressing the start button. And then like the Atari 800 emulator that we've been using in the past, games like Centipede are now fully playable, and I still suck at it. All games that use analog input now work exactly as intended with your Xbox's thumbstick, and it's freaking awesome. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the core options available to us within the A5200 core. So heading into your Retro Art Quick Menu, go to Options. And our first option is to choose our BIOS file. So if we're using an official 5200.rom BIOS file, you can choose this. Or if you want to use the built-in HLE BIOS file, you can choose this one. Again, official is recommended for compatibility reasons. Next, we have Interframe Blending. So if you want to simulate the ghosting effects found from a CRT TV, you can do so here, and you have ghosting options all the way up to 95%. I like simple myself. Next is an audio filter. This just basically uh, reduces some of the sharp, piercing noises of Atari 5200 sound. So you can turn it on, turn it off, personal preference, and then you can also choose a filtering level. Next up, we have controller hacks for various games. So some Atari 5200 games would work with uh, two sticks like Robotron 2048, so you can change that to dual stick mode here to use your controller in twin stick mode. And then there were some Atari 5200 games that required different ports to play. So like port one would not be player one. So you could swap the ports here. And next we have joystick sensitivity ranges. So you get to choose how fast your D-pad can respond to things, how fast your analog stick can respond to things. And then you could choose the response type. And then of course the dead zone. And that's going to do it for our core options for the A5200 core. And one last thing I want to cover here real quick is shaders. Head into the shaders tab, you can turn shaders on here, and begin loading up some presets. So for these older systems, I'm really beginning to like CRT Royal as my personal preference. So I'm just going to get that one loaded up. And now when I play my games, I have a nice CRT filter and it looks like a really nice Atari 5200. Now, of course, shaders are a matter of personal preference, so go through them, find the ones that you personally like, and once you find it, you can head back into the shader tab and click on the save button here and save it as a core preset, so that way every time you load up an Atari 5200 game with this core, that is the shader that will greet you. And that's gonna do it for Atari 5200 emulation. Thank you so much as always for watching today's tutorial. Really appreciate all of you helping this channel grow. But now if you could all do me a couple of huge favors here at the end, hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button, notification bell, so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. Loads to come, and I would love to have you along for the ride. And for anyone further interested in supporting the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running, and we're super grateful to each and every one of you who has done so. Thank you so much for being our champions. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.